Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so that sounds like a thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. So please excuse the redness in my face, I've just gua sha If you haven't seen my previous video, please go check it out. But today we're taking another look into the world of Instagram versus reality. This is a series I like to do inspired by the Reddit forum of the same name. So although I talk about skincare on this channel, my actual degree is in editorial and advertising photography where I took a particular interest in digital manipulation and beauty work in both editorial, advertising, and now social media posts. So I like to do these videos because I do feel like they're strongly connected to the skincare and beauty world because what we're seeing a lot of nowadays is fake results from skincare products, especially with bloggers, Instagrammers, YouTubers, fake before and afters. Brands are advertising to us in very suspicious ways. And I also feel it's important to know what real, real beauty looks like and what fake manipulated beauty looks like, especially when we're trying to be the best person that we can be ourselves. So my goal here isn't to shame anyone for using filters. I always like to do a disclaimer. I do, I am not against using filters or beauty filters. What I am against is false advertising. But instead, what I want to do today is show you how easy it is to manipulate images nowadays, how often it is people are doing it, what you could be looking out for if you want to know if an image is real or not. So we can question what we're seeing. So we can question those amazing bodies or that amazing skin that makes us feel like shit. <laughs> and to question these impossible beauty standards that are still around to this day for men, but most commonly and most overwhelmingly for women. Today, I want to show you exactly how easy it is to edit your skin to perfection, some Photoshop fails that I've been tagged in, and also a possible change in the law when it comes to these types of manipulated images within advertising. We have to start with a kind Kardashian, as I've said before, Facetune Photoshop is kind of part of the Kardashian brand now. Whether that's a good thing or not, I'll let you decide. However, it seems like Khloe Kardashian is in all the gossip columns, the gossip columns, in the news again for another unrecognizable, digitally retouched image of herself. However, it wasn't at the hands of Khloe Kardashian this time, it was at the hands of Ipsy, which is a subscription service where once a month you get a couple of cosmetics in the bags, like mini samples. I'm not here to advertise Ipsy, but Khloe Kardashian was actually announced as the new face of Ipsy and subscribers were pissed. And it's not because it was Khloe Kardashian, it's because it wasn't Khloe Kardashian's face that they were seeing. It was this, whatever this is. I mean, so much work has been done here. What can be done to a, a picture in post-production has been done here, but we have everything from an amazing makeup artist, lighting, photographer, and everything's been finished to a very professional standard. But it's very hard to break this down. What we can see in this image is a lot of almost like shadow and contouring play. So you see she has this dark shadow all around her face and even under her neck. And you'll see that it's been done on her arm as well dark around the sides, lighter in the middle. This adds like a slim trim look. Khloe Kardashian out of all the Kardashians is known for her love of exercise and keeping fit. So I find it slightly odd that these kind of techniques are made to make her look even slimmer, I guess. I don't wanna linger on this image for too long, but what this reminds me of is a lot of what we're seeing nowadays when it comes to um, bloggers, Instagrammers, and then no filter pictures. What a lot of them are doing is using this kind of fake natural contour look where they're making the shadows darker and the highlights lighter. And there's a few ways you can do this. You can pop onto Facetune and use a very simple brighten darken tool. But a lot of the more professional bloggers and celebrity influencers seem to be doing this more natural, less obvious way of doing it. And I'm gonna show you a really, really easy way to do it that I feel anyone can do. And is possibly the way people are doing this technique. So I'm gonna use this picture of myself just cause it's the highest quality one I have. You create a separate layer on top and then you start brushing in your highlights and shadows using black and white. Again, this is not a professional way of doing it. This is a very simple way of doing it. And what I've noticed a lot of bloggers doing. Blog, do we still call them bloggers, Instagrammers as well? Play around with that. What we're then gonna do is a blur them. So we're gonna add a Gau Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur. We're gonna overlay that layer, play around with the opacity a little bit, maybe even the um, saturation if it's looking a little bit too orange and burnt. Play around the opacity and then you see how subtle yet effective this difference is. As I mentioned, you can also use the dodge and burn tools, but it looks a little bit, you know, not as real. This is a really super simple technique you can use to make your chin look more chiseled, to make your jaw look stronger, to make your forehead look smaller, to make your arms and body look slimmer. Super simple, I've seen people doing this. 
So on that note, I've had a few requests to show you exactly how to retouch skin in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you, not because I'm encouraging anyone to do it, but I want to show you how easy, how easy it is to fake your way to good skin, to perfect skin. This is something that, again, you could do in Facetune with a patch tool, but again, the more professional Instagrammers, bloggers, are probably using Photoshop to make it more seamless and create fake results so that they can get a paycheck from it from a cosmetics brand. So with this image, what I'm gonna do is create a new layer. We always want to go back on our mistakes. So I'm gonna zoom in to all this texture, fine lines, pores, a little breakout that I have, things that normal humans have. So the easiest way I think this is done is with the patch tool. So what the patch tool can do is circle your blemish, your imperfection, and then you just highlight over an area of skin that is blemish free. And as you can see, it blends in pretty seamlessly. Let's go around a few more pores. But what you can see is it does create these little blurred little patches, and that's something to look out for when you're looking for fake skin, basically. So another way we can do this is with the healing brush tool. Get it to the size of your fine line, your spot, your imperfection. Clone a sample of skin very close to the imperfection and then highlight over. And as you can see, that's just disappearing. Another technique, another thing we can use is this spot healing brush tool. Let's go to these fine hairs I have on my mono brow area that I need to pluck. And with this, it's super simple. You just go over the hairs, over the spot, over the fine line. And again, it just copies skin around the area. Hides that blemish. Well, oh, see, look, I have a nose hair here. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. See how easy it is, how simple it is to do things like this. You can also get the clone stamp tool. I don't know, let's say I don't like these dark corners of my eyes. <laughs> I'm gonna clone a brighter area of skin around it, make sure it's at a sensible op opacity, sorry, and then just stamp over it. Maybe I don't like this mole on my chin, cheek even, so I'm just gonna clone over that as well. A lot of times it's best to do this at a low opacity than build up. There you go. There's a lot more things you can do um, in regards to getting rid of blemishes, all that kind of stuff with separation frequency, but this is the easiest way that literally anyone can do, and that I do think people are doing very effortlessly. Now, I want to direct you to this picture of Demi Lovato that I was sent in my DMs by quite a few people over on Instagram. She's in a chair, she's having her makeup done, and it's clearly filtered. Her lips are glitching, her skin is clearly filtered because it's poreless, it's perfection really in here. And as this finger comes in to do the makeup, whatever it's doing, that finger too is looking oddly smooth and it's merging into her skin. It becomes part of her face. This is a clearly filtered shot, but, and I want your opinion on this too, this is a very rare sight on Demi Lovato's Instagram. She's not pretending she looks like this really. She's not hiding the fact that she's using a filter again because she does not use these extreme filters in all of her pictures or videos. This reminds me of the early days when filters started appearing on our phones where you're you know, getting ready, you're in, going in full glam, right? So you take a picture using this filter, taking a picture of you and a group of friends and you're using a filter. You know, on a night out, but not every single thing you do, which is what it's turned into. Walking the dog, their face is filtered, sitting on their sofa, with their sponsored skinny tea, their face is filtered. In fact, the rest of Demi's profile is unbeauty filters. She's got videos discussing mental health, posts opening up about her own body insecurities. And that's what we need to see more of. As I mentioned, a glam filter, in my opinion, is pretty harmless every now and then. But there is a difference between a celebrity or someone sat in a chair having their hair, their makeup done, versus a selfie on the sofa pretending this is how you look every single day. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that. You know, I feel like whilst filters start off pretty harmless, they've just become something that people can completely change their appearance with. So here's one I was tagged in a lot that I have actually seen been doing the rounds as well. Here we have Christine Quinn from Selling Sunset, a reality TV program with some amazing ladies who always look amazing, who make a shit ton of money from selling houses. This picture has been making its rounds and it's a video versus photo comparison of a photo shoot. And I actually have no idea what this was for, maybe just content for her Instagram, but yes, some work has very obviously been done here. The usual, smaller waist. Uh, breast shape changed, a bit of work on the arms, lips, and skin. All things you come to expect from 
not just a professional photo shoot, but a face-tuned picture nowadays. This is clearly a professional photo shoot and done at a very, very professional level. And this is one of those cases where everyone in the comments and all those celebrity blogs are saying this is obviously Photoshop, like she's lying. But I don't think Christine is pretending it isn't. I think what Christine has done here is create an image that doesn't look out of place in a magazine. In my opinion, she's perfect without any of these um, enhancements done. But this is another case of, even though the majority of us are aware that this picture has been retouched and that these changes have been made, should there be a disclaimer that says this picture has been retouched? In my opinion, if you're selling something, if you're advertising something, Yes. Well, in the UK, one day it could possibly be the case that with any retouched or manipulated editorial, sponsor content, advertising content, you have to make it clear that the image has been retouched. Conservative MP Dr. Luke Evans is calling on the government to consider introducing a bill that would require advertisers, broadcasters, and publishers to display a warning notice on digitally altered images. Now, he isn't calling for a ban on Photoshop or filtered images, but a call to inform, and that would consists of a logo on the image to represent the image has been altered, only when it comes to body proportions. And you know what? I don't hate this idea. I actually really like this idea. You see it a lot in the, here in the UK. If there's product placement in a program, you get a little P in the corner of your screen. Mascara adverts, they have to now declare that false lashes have been used or digital manipulation has been used. So this comes from Dr. Luke Evans um, working as a GP and meeting countless amounts of teenagers and adults and their struggles with poor self-image. No government is voting on this yet. However, this is actually already the law in France where you will see photography retouchy on editorial and advertisements that have been retouched, which I think is an amazing idea and is something that should be done if the aim of the image is to advertise. But then I also feel like even just for Instagrammers who, or wherever you're posting an image, who have altered their body a lot, could just say, just say, even if you just use the filter, like if I post an image, I'll say this has a slightly bluer tinge on it, or this has a brightening filter that makes my skin look a little bit better, whether that was my intention or not. It's just super easy to drop that into the caption. I feel like it takes no adverts and everyone can do this from big, big advertising companies, big beauty brands to the smallest of content creators. I don't think it's enough now to just presume people know what's going on. So yeah, as always, this video is an open discussion. Let me know your opinion down below. Again, we're not attacking anyone for having plastic surgery, fillers, Botox, whatever. Personally, that doesn't bother me. I want to know your opinion when it comes to declaring when a filter has been used, when bodies have been manipulated, when people's been slimmed down, when skin's been retouched. Does retouching even belong in cosmetic advertising? I don't think so. Let me know all in the comments down below, but that is it from me now. I will see you next time.